Now let's head over to Steve and Michael to tell us more about Sports Turf Professional tips and tricks. Steve, take it away. Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to join us today to talk about sports field irrigation. I'm Steve Apostolowski, product manager for Synthetic Turf Rotors, and I'm happy to be presenting with Michael Betcher, one of our sales managers out of the Midwest states and sports turf industry insider. Michael, please tell us more about sports turf fields from your perspective. Thanks, Steve. First off, welcome to all those joining today. I know we all wish we could be catching up in Palm Springs, but all we can hope for at this time is you're all healthy and enjoying your new year. After working as a turf manager in the professional sports turf sector for 12 years, it gave me the opportunity to not only learn a lot about the fields I managed, but it also allowed me to learn about the turf managers and their unique situations that they, come, they have to deal with when it comes to managing their sites. Uses of sports surfaces were straightforward for some, where they only had one to two events a week, but found so many facilities today are tasked with providing a surface for multifunctional high usage, no matter the time of year. Regardless how the surface is used, whether recreational or professional, the common goal is to always have the surface prepared to the best of our ability. When you ask a turf manager what that means, most respond saying the turf needs to be safe for those utilizing the surface, while also providing a surface that is visibly appealing by those who can view it. This may sound easy to an industry outsider, but with challenges of multiple users on these fields, short turnaround from one user to the next, it can provide several challenges. Regardless, the turf manager strives to keep the surface at a high quality, providing a quality product for all those who use the surface. As you can see with these images, these surfaces all have different demands, budgets, and goals, which provide unique challenges in management, but most importantly, how the moisture needs to be controlled for optimal performance by its athletes is greatly different for all. There are many factors that go into creating a quality sports field, all of which are very important. These include proper design and the selection of the subsurface soils and turf cultivars, along with irrigation and drainage, while all needing professional installation of these products, so that when you as turf managers are expected to maintain and manage the surface, you have the proper tools. In the end, these all come together to be a weld oil machine. If one isn't working, the machine can break down quickly, resulting in a poor quality surface and a higher chance of unsafe conditions. So today, let's focus on irrigation, which many will simply refer to as moisture management, considering its crucial role in surface performance. For those looking to advance the quality of their playing surface, how you utilize an irrigation system is very important to how the field will perform from day to day. We see this on both turf and bare soil surfaces, such as softball, baseball infields, and their warning tracks. So when we are able to start with a clean slate and your project is new construction, there are three key factors that can quickly make or break any project. Planning your project, selecting an appropriate equipment, and oversee and execute quality installation. As you can see in the pick, an irrigation system can only perform as well as it designed. Whereas in the other pick, an irrigation system was designed specifically for this unique design and usage, and the turf is performing at a very high level. Taking time to lay out and specify what the goals of the new irrigation system needs to be is key to its long-term success. Asking, is the system hydraulically sound? Can we locate the pressurized pipes off the plane surface? Can the valves be above ground or off the field? Are the sprinklers spaced appropriately? And finally, is the controller positioned for easy access for the turf manager? If items are overlooked now, the ability to make changes and upgrades later on will require much more time and energy and result in a poor performing system. Identifying where quick couplers need to be located, ensuring that we can reach all necessary areas throughout the surface with hoses is a big decision. If on a baseball or softball field, do we need infield warning or warning track head? Is there phases planned for that? For, is there additional phases planned for that site? Then we need to make sure we have the water capacity to support all aspects of your facility. The system must be correct hyd hydraulically. Is there sufficient pressure and flow to irrigate the entire property within the water window? Is the equipment sized correctly to reduce the friction loss, preventing excessive pressure loss, ensuring proper performance? Do I need to plan now for any future expansion in the surrounding areas? Step back and take a broad outlook before proceeding. Here we have a system that showcases proper pipe sizing with a three inch main line and our one inch, one and a half inch pipe as our further out 
as our heads that are located further out. When at all possible, think about keeping the pressurized pipes off the field of play to minimize the potential problems if there's a break. And the valve boxes have a larger footprint, so keep those in reduced traffic areas, allowing easier future service and one less item to worry about in the surface of play. Make sure the sprinklers are spaced correctly. This is a must to ensure adequate coverage and result in a higher level of surface performance. Plan now to keep the part circle and full circle rotors sewn separately, which will make for easier scheduling. And don't forget about the controller placement. Ensure that it has a level of accessibility that field maintenance staff will need for routine maintenance and operation. On sports field, it is recommended to use all the same size nozzle for every sprinkler, no matter the arc pattern. Unfortunately, this can cause problems with wet areas and dry areas for some because they are not implementing a match precipitation protocol and zones aren't properly designed, where the different arc heads are on the same zone. The best way to achieve match precipitation is to group the 90 degree arc heads separated from the 180 degree arc and the 360s on their own zone. When it comes time to schedule their run times, your 180 degree zone should be half of your 360 degree heads and the 90 should be half of the times of your 180s because they are covering half of the area. With the de design aspects identified, we now need to choose the correct materials to make our project a reality. With several options to choose from, it is your job to analyze products and select what is best for your situation. Make sure you ask the right questions to your irrigation contractor and confirm the products will meet your demands. Identifying station counts, potential for expansion, and your ability to manage the system at any time needs to push your controller selection. Otherwise, you may end up chasing with multiple controllers and management headaches. Steve, please provide a bit more insight into the product selection of our irrigation system. Looking at the piping, what's the best choice? That depends on the size of the pipe and the installation techniques that are common in your area. Gasketed, solvent weld, PVC, or HDPE are all choices to consider. But no matter what, don't skimp on the durability of the pipe. The materials being used need to meet the design criteria. I know this may have never happened to you, but I've heard that sometimes contractors like to cut corners, saving money wherever possible. If swing joints are specified on all heads or just the one inch heads, make sure swing joints are used and not the flex pipe. But don't let inferior materials derail your project. You'll be living with it long after the contractor has collected his last check. And with valves too, several choices exist. Depending on water quality, operating pressures, historical product success, and how elaborate of control is required, there are multiple options. Just remember, the valve is the heart of the system controlling the flow, so choose carefully. When it comes down to sprinklers, there are many to choose from. The best choice is likely one that has small exposed area that pops up tall over the turf with a large selection of water efficient nozzles backed by a strong company. Price is a factor, but it's not the most important factor. And when looking at controllers, the choices are almost endless. Depending on your requirements, it may be that a simple model will suffice. But when looking at the needs for central control, uh, project flow management, and complex scheduling, along with the easy user interface, the choice is narrowed to a few industry leaders. Thanks, Steve. So now that we've got our product selected for our job, now we need to look at the installation of the system. You can have the best design and premier material, but if the installation is done incorrectly, the integrity of the system can break down quickly and result in headaches for you, the turf manager. Let's look at some key factors to prevent that from happening. Do the materials meet the design specs, whether it's a Schedule 40 or Class 200 to meet the pressure of the system? Will the valves handle the pressure? Are the materials being used? Are they correct? Are, is, the, is the install in terms of the gluing and cutting of your junctions 
done correctly is the pipe at the correct depth. And the big one that we're going to talk about here today is the wiring done correctly in terms of selecting your, your wire uh, jacket thickness, getting your wire splices done correctly, and what is what do you have for expansion of the system in terms of spare wires that you can utilize down the road. Making sure your pipes are placed appropriately in the trench to reduce as much directional force and prevent fittings from fatigue and stress, but you also need to make sure that the fitting is appropriate for the system. As you can see in one of the pictures here, that, that fitting, that coupling, received too much stress, resulting in cracking, and even more so, wasn't glued correctly, resulting in fatigue and failure of that coupling. When evaluating the wiring, whether the system is conventional or two-wire, connections that are made need to be waterproof and going to withstand the conditions of the system through the life of, it, through the life of its operation. Ideally, the valve boxes will remain dry and no material gets washed in, but we all know that this is not a reality. Working, with, working initially with your install crew, whether that's you uh, on your guys or a professional irrigation installer, making sure that you're on the same page and that connections are done correctly from the start will ensure a high quality functioning system. As you can tell from the pictures in these slides, these connections are destined for failure. No waterproofing and no quality wire nuts uh, being used uh, on these connections ensuring that there's going to be failure and water getting into these wires in short a matter of time. We continue to emphasize the wiring because every connection throughout a system can cause an issue if not done correctly. The valve wiring too may appear to be easy, but if the incorrect wire is selected and installed in a haphazard way, the electric goblins will forever haunt the project. And unlike other materials such as controllers, valves and rotors that can be changed out easily, Wiring is installed forever. Do it right from the start, saving all the time and energy for troubleshooting, giving an extra detail to proper wire installation and connections. We also recommend that you photograph your system as much as possible to assist with visuals for any future questions that might arise. And don't forget the boxes. Use the valve boxes. Any splice or connection that you do within your system, make sure that a valve box is utilized. So as we've discussed, substandard installation of even the best materials can drastically change the long-term durability of an irrigation system. In this regard here, we should never have to use blocks and or rebar to prevent the thrust at, at a uh, joint on a system. Um, making sure that a system is laid out properly. As you can tell, the system here, pipes are laid out. They've already planned for how this system is going to connect with each other. So if the, connect, if the correct materials are used, but installed at that substandard manner, we're not gonna have a good long-term uh, quality system. The best pipes and fitties are installed with the wrong glue or not the correct way with the proper glue, the strength of the piping will be compromised, leading to premature failures. Take the time to do it right the first time. In the end, all of these components that we've talked about in a new construction system, we're confident that if we follow these guidelines, that the new system is going to be, be performed, performed better and safer and make the turf surface even that much more high quality for the maintenance staff to be happy, keep their budget items low in terms of their irrigation system, and at the end of the day, keep those athletes and the administration happy. We as turf managers, that is our job, to make sure that the, the surface is kept to the highest quality possible and let these irrigation systems do their work for you. For those of you guys listening here today, you might say, you know what, I don't have a new project, okay? I don't have the ability to start over fresh. Um, but then what, what can we do? What, what are components of the existing surface can be updated and changed and improved to make the surface better? Can it be the soil? Is it maybe the irrigation system that here in this regard, this, is, this field might perform really well with the simple addition of an irrigation system? but maybe the subsoils need to be replaced out. Maybe the simple substitution of a turf cultivar would help. You know, can I, can I, can I institute some drainage uh, to help out with the system? 
can my mowing practices or any of my other cultural practices be altered and, and changed to assist with the field? Um, or can I simply work with my administration and, and use different use plans uh, that, that are available out there and, and talking with the different uh, entities that utilize the facility? Okay, but here we are here today, we're, we're focusing more on the irrigation. Okay, so if we have an existing irrigation, there's too many problem areas that we, that we just simply keep chasing our tail, what, what can we do? So we got to overall analyze the overall site plan and create what we think is the, is the best way of addressing any of the issues. You can review the equipment that's being used, whether it's an older and efficient products that we have, or just simply assess the quality of the installation. Maybe we need to simply go back and do some connections, whether it's wires and or some of the um, just piping connections that we have. Regardless, make sure we have a detailed site plan of what we're going to do. Get some water audits done that helps drive the decision-making process um, on the project and always shoot for continued improvement. For instance, if the water supply is incorrect, maybe we need to correct the water supply uh, from the get-go to allow the rest of the system to perform at a higher quality. But make sure you understand what you want to tackle first and have a nice detailed plan to, to, to rectify your irrigation system and get it performing to where you need it to be. Thanks, Michael. Now that we know what's wrong, what can we do to fix it? We can modify, change, and upgrade what we have. Quite frequently, an existing project will have a wide variety of incorrect nozzles that have been installed over the years. It may be that simply installing new nozzles in an existing sprinkler will sufficiently correct the hydraulics to make a dramatic improvement. But what if the sprinklers are too old or damaged to just simply change nozzles? If so, then a replacement rotor would be an awesome choice. And remember to choose one that's safe with a tall pop-up and one that has many efficient nozzles to choose from. <clears throat> Whether or not you change sprinklers, it's important to make sure that the heads are installed at the correct height. Too low or too high are bad choices that don't do well for overall system performance. If they are installed on a flexible swing joint, it will be easier to position them correctly. A note to add to your turf managers that cultivate and top dress consistently. A six, a six inch riser is a great choice as it will allow for a longer period of time before having to adjust the grade on your heads to accommodate for the rise of your playing surface. <clears throat> but before doing all that work of changing nozzles, the entire sprinkler or correcting the height. Do some of those heads need to be relocated slightly or maybe more than slightly? Changes now will greatly improve coverage. Always good to get new valves installed. They're much more reliable and trouble-free. And the newer valves have more useful options available. For instance, if the pressure is too high, it can be reduced at the valve with a pressure regulator. And if dirty water is a concern, there are special diaphragms built to eliminate clogging of small internal ports. While you're working on the main line, maybe install a new isolation valve for your next repair. Or finally, add that new quick coupler valve in the main line for some occasional hand watering or cleaning. Small investment now that'll make life easier. And while you're in the process of replacing the valves, don't forget to raise and straighten those valve boxes. Not only can they be dangerous if they're too high or low, they can make it almost impossible to service the valves when needed. In addition to valves, maybe you'll need to install a new pump to boost, to boost the pressure and flow, or maybe install an elaborate filter if the water is too dirty, both of which can be expensive, but depending on the situation, they will be a welcome addition to your system. But what about the installation? How can it be improved? Well, little by little. The plan and patience, it'll be no time before your system is all tuned up. But to start, take the time to fix the problem correctly now. If you install the correct fittings, glued in the proper way, 
or maybe upgrade to a mechanical fitting if it's a continual problem, the chances that it'll need to be repaired again are greatly reduced. Yeah, thanks, Steve. And the last portion of the, of the system that we might be able to work with is simply upgrading the controller. Easy to gain superior control while bringing water saving capabilities to a reality. One of the fastest ways to save water and increase user satisfaction may be to install that new Wi-Fi controller where they're, lo where they're loaded with high level features like flow monitoring and the capability to have remote access into that controller and that system while offsite. Whether you're working on a new or existing project we're confident that by following some of these tips, they result in providing a better, safer turf and making for a happier maintenance staff and administration that was, that's exceptionally happy with your work. On behalf of Steve and myself and the entire team at Hunt Industries, we want to thank you for taking the time to listen in and see how a quality irrigation system can become a bigger part of your success and the management strategies on your sports fields. Feel free to ask your questions now or follow up with your local Hunter rep when you're able. Happy irrigating. Well, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for stopping by. The game has changed. The partnership hasn't. We're here for you. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the live sessions.